Fabulous. So we are we are recorded. Yes. Okay, I want to call this meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee Outreach Subcommittee to order at four o'clock on the 8th of March. We are meeting pursuant to state law and regulation, which allows us to meet uh, meet virtually. So I'm going to ask you to you signify your presence uh, verbally. Um, Alex Lopez. Present. Thank you. Alex Lefebvre. Here. Anika Lopes. Present. And Austin Sarrett is present, and we are um, skillfully aided by, um, by Angela Mills. Thank you, Angie. Okay. So we have no minutes because this is our first meeting. The first order of business is the election of a chair. So nominations for chair of the subcommittee. Good. Well, then I will nominate Alex Lefebvre. How's that? Second. Thank you. All right. Are there other nominations? All right. So now we're going to vote to affirm the choice of Alex Lefebvre as chair of the subcommittee. Alex Lopez. Aye. Thank you. Anika Lopes. Aye. Austin Sarrett. Aye. Alex Lefebvre. I guess I. <laughs> Good. Fabulous. All right, Alex. Cool. Take over. It's always fun to take over for a meeting you haven't planned. Um, so, um, uh, sorry. Um, so our first item that we have on the agenda is the subcommittee charge. And I think Austin in the design subcommittee, you had someone read that or you or do we, do folks want to revisit what our charge is since this is our first meeting? Uh, okay. Angela, do you happen to have that <laughs> handy? I was gonna say, probably as handy as I do. <laughs> Great, okay, sorry. Multitasking here. Um, sorry, I have my computer is not happy with multiple things here. Okay, um, so the uh, so basically we have uh, in addition to the chair of the JLBC as a voting ex officio member, the outreach subcommittee shall have three voting members um, appointed by the chair of the Jones Library Building Committee. The focus of the outreach subcommittee shall be to inform the community, seek community engagement, and make design recommendations to the design subcommittee. The outreach subcommittee shall design and develop an outreach plan, which will include at a minimum, keeping the community informed via in-person gatherings, as well as using the Library Town website, engage Amherst Library Town social media and email blasts, holding listening sessions in order to gather community input, responding to questions or concerns raised by the JLBC. The subcommittee will work with appropriate town and library personnel, the OPM, owner's project manager, and the designers as needed to execute its outreach plan. Uh, after appropriate consultation with the community, the outreach subcommittee shall provide input on the designs proposed by the design team, and explanations for the recommendations to the design subcommittee during the schematic and design development phases. Thank you, Angela. If you would pull that down so we can see each other, that would be great. Um, any questions on the subcommittee charge? Seeing none. Oh, Austin. So I wonder whether we could just clarify um, the part of the charge about our making recommendations. So, what, Alex, what do you take that to mean? We will make recommendations. Uh, what I personally take that to mean, and we as a committee can talk about it, is that based on the feedback that we get from the community that we would make 
recommendations that we are hearing from the community. But I think, I mean, to me, part of this gets into probably the next the next phase of this is we I feel like we need to sort of create a plan we need to create some sort of public engagement plan and what that means and what those steps are and so I think maybe the answer to that question might be part of that process Austin I think we want to be as clear as we can be at the outset what we are doing yes um so if I'm a member of the public and I come to a meeting and I say, I think you ought to do X, what should I expect with that recommendation or that thought? That's what I'm trying to get at. Yes, I hear you. And I, so I think this to me is that, so the next item on the agenda is the outreach planning, which is deadlines, activities, and process. And I think that's the beginning of that conversation is perhaps answering that question. I'm happy, to have, I'm happy to have it answered at any point, but I think we need to answer it and we need to be clear with members of the public what our answer is. In other yeah. words, one, so, one, one, one model is that we're just going to take all the recommendations that we hear and we're going to pass them on to the design committee and the design committee will sort through them. Another model is we're going to screen the recommendations that we get or the suggestions that we get. And the, the language of the charge is a little ambiguent, amb ambivalent, ambiguous about whether it's the pass through or the screening. And that's at some point, we just want to be clear about what it is that that involves. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of the charge of this committee is to figure that out. So I don't think I have a ready answer because we haven't discussed it yet. So the next section is outreach planning and it has deadlines. Uh, Ken Romeo, who doesn't appear to be here. So we'll table deadlines as we don't know them yet. And I assume part of that is because we still haven't hired uh, the architects yet, which is what really gets things moving in terms of activities. Um, yes, Angela. Ken's coming hey. in from the attendee room. Sweet. Hey, Ken. Hey. Sorry about that. I was having problems like you mentioned uh, earlier where my machine just didn't want to allow me in. It didn't want me to do anything. So I apologize. Uh, yes, you were right. Uh, as far as deadlines, we don't have anything as we are working through the procurement phase of the design team. So you're absolutely right. But I wanted to, at least since uh, it allowed me in, uh, let you know that I was here. So I don't know if there's any other questions. Okay. Well, I guess I have, I mean, again, just having been made uh, chair of the committee, I haven't had a whole lot of time to really think about what today's conversation would look like, but my initial thoughts, and I would love to hear other people weigh in, is, you know, I read our charge as to inform the community, to seek community engagement, and then that what uh, Austin was referring to ambiguous, make design recommendations to the design subcommittee. And so I feel like the first thing we sort of need to do is figure out a process. So, you know, we need to identify the decisions to be made and where and how public can influence those decisions. Um, does it make sense to identify stakeholders so we know who we're trying to seek engagement with? Um, do we need to define the role, you know, of the public, of this committee, of other people who might help us? Um, there are a number of people in the audience who I know have expressed, I see members of the public in the audience who have expressed interest in participating in this community outreach. And I don't know what that looks like and how we do that as a committee and what we need to decide about that. And then lastly, creating some sort of public engagement plan, ideally with maybe, you know, milestones along the project timeline. So I feel like Anika and Alex probably have a lot more experience with this than I do. So I'm just gonna open it up and would ask for people to sort of share what your initial thoughts are. So Anika. Sorry, I'm having trouble unmuting. Uh, yeah, so just to build off of what you just said, I think it would be important for us to also focus on identifying our audience. So in terms of our base audience who are 
following um, and that we you know, are with us and hopefully we'll be spreading the word and also our target audience, which will be our greatest challenge. Um, so if we had them, we wouldn't have a target audience. So really <laughs> identifying uh, who they are, how, how to reach them. And, you know, also I think that's a great opportunity to focus on, you know, stakeholders and, you know, utilizing what we have, like the town websites and social media, whether it's library as, as well, but, you know, really kind of focusing is especially on that target audience, identifying their values and also what about the project will be valuable to them. Um, I think what we would also really need to have a bit more clarity on what we can offer in terms of participation, um, what we can offer in terms of what, what are we doing with these recommendations. I agree, so we're very clear from the beginning and not misleading, you know, because I think with target audience, it's always important that you're building trust. Alex, you have some yeah. thoughts? Um, yeah, I love, I love what was just said. I think, uh, you know, especially in this, especially in this time when we're waiting on architects and whatever, I think there's a really great opportunity for us to really um, define what are the values that are guiding this project. And uh, so, you know, the things that I have heard um, are that sustainability and equity are both uh, key values to this project. And I think um, going out to our, our target audience, um, to use the, the term that Anika was using so well, um, and asking them to, to define those things with us uh, is a really crucial way of getting base ownership um, from the get-go. And so I think that uh, in terms of looking at our metrics, um, you know, the point earlier about are we just conveying information as it comes to us from the public or are we filtering it? Um, I personally have imagined this as sort of holding space um, to be able to, to let the community figure that out together. Uh, specifically, there are gonna be lots of things that I'm sure people are gonna feel passionately about and they might be the only person to feel passionately about and cool. Um, if that door handle really speaks to you and it needs to be read and no one objects, I don't see a problem with it being read. Um, but I think there's gonna be plenty of stuff that we do disagree on or that we need to find clarification in a central point. And uh, I view this committee's work as being able to hold the space to, to bring people together to have those conversations about what does it actually mean for Amherst to have a inclusive and equitable uh, library system. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I, I, I think, I mean, you know, my <laughs> cart horse. So um, <laughs> I think, you know, all of that, I completely, yes, sounds fabulous. And it, it, feels like one of the first things we need to figure out is what we can and can't, like what's changeable? What, what, what's, what can the community have feedback on versus what they can't? And I guess, or can't is a strong word, but I mean, what's, what would create cost overrides that might be untenable or what, what are the boundaries? Um, and who, who defines that? Um, I don't know, Ken, is that the OPM that sort of helps guide what makes sense for us to be looking at or what is that I mean, this is all new to me so i i don't i don't have a i don't, I don't have a guide that tells me what's next i'm sort of making it up as i go along with you guys hoping <laughs> hoping that you're wiser than i am uh yeah we we can offer you know guidance naturally but uh you know again as uh, was said you know it's really up to the community but uh, you know when you guys hear something, and if it's something that uh, we need to look at, you know, whether it's a program issue that uh, you know maybe is supported or not supported, and what those ramifications are, we can provide guidance on that, uh, along with naturally uh, costs if there's going to be cost implications. So, yeah, 
we'll be able to provide some guidance. Austin. Um, Alex, thank you for the question. I, I think that um, we, this subcommittee needs to do a little bit of self and collective education. So we need to be clear about exactly what you said, what is changeable and what is not changeable. Some elements are not changeable. Uh, they're required by what we've committed to for MBLC. And some elements are gonna be very hard to change because of the work that's been done through the schematic design phase. So I think that we as a committee need to be clear about you know, what are the things that we really cannot change? Um, and what are the things that are gonna be difficult to change because we've been going along in this, and what are things that are really wide open? I think that'd be really, um, that would really be important uh, because again, I think that we, 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 we don't wanna act as if we're starting from zero. We're not, we're, there's a lot, a lot has already been done. And we wanna be clear what, what is just not changeable, what could be changed, but it'd be difficult. And what is absolutely, you know, like red walls versus green walls. I mean, no one's talked about it. So that's completely wide open. Um, but we, we need to be clear about that so we can be clear with the people that we're meeting with. And then um, my, own, my own view is that um, we wanna gather and collate the comments and reactions from the community. Uh, but we don't want to lead people to think that any time someone recommends something that we're going to follow through on that recommendation. And again, that goes to what we just, what I was just saying. Some of it might be because it's completely fixed in the design. Some of it might be because what they're recommending is completely contra contrary to the values that we've articulated for the building and that we've talked about with the town council and we talked about with the electorate. So, I think a little self-education about what's in which bucket or which in which category. The other thing I was gonna just say, Alex, I don't know if this is, um, this is germane. If it isn't, please just tell me it isn't. I think we wanna have an early meeting. I mean, as soon as possible to do just a little bit of education of people about the committee, who's on the committee, what is the work of the committee, what is the charge, I mean, the building committee, what is the charge of the committee? So even before we're there to kind of take, you know, suggestions about this or that thing in the design, I, I wonder if it would, might make a good idea to have some meetings just to explain to people what the process is. Alex? Yeah, and also, um, sorry, I keep meaning to say this. If uh, if it just makes it easier for the sake of naming purposes, um, y'all can call me Xander. It, I reply to both. Uh, my students do. It makes it easier. Anyways, um, the so I, I just wanted to express uh, some tension that I'm feeling right now in the um, during a during a lot of the lead up to the vote on. The library, there were conversations happening uh, that disagreed wildly on how, what could be changed and what couldn't. Um, and it, I want to acknowledge that tension um, is likely to be carried over, that we're still figuring out what can be changed and what can't. And so I want to be mindful in owning that. Um, as we go to the public, especially to talk to people who may have felt that there never was anything significant that they could change, um, and being able to provide legitimate opportunities for them to still have input, because um, I, I do believe one of the target audiences are those who have not felt included in this process up to now. Um, the the other thing that I just wanted to name in that same vein is uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, Austin, um, 
what I'm hearing is a model in which the public comes to us and we function as an intermediary in either in either capacity of collecting and passing on information or of um, ciphering it, but that we're the intermediary between the public and uh, the design committee or the, the larger committee. Um, I, I worry about that as a model simply because if we want people to be engaged, which I do personally, just saying it out loud, um, I do believe that we need to empower them to have a voice directly or to be part of that process. And so I appreciate you wanting to be clear about our process in that. Um, I also just want to be clear that my priority is to allow people to speak directly to each other. And so having holding those forums in which the community can talk to each other instead of talking to me so that I can pass it on to someone else. Thanks, Alex. Austin? I think we have heated agreement. Um, the only thing that I'm trying to make sense of is the notion that we make recommendations. So we can't and shouldn't prevent any member of the public from communicating with the Jones Building Committee. There's nothing that we could or would want to, you know, someone wants to write to the committee and communicate whatever they want to communicate, they can. That's, I have no problem with that. I'm just trying to make sense of what it means to say that we are going to make recommendations. That's all. I'm trying to make sense of that part of our charge. And I want to, I think, um, that we don't want to be in a position where we're saying this committee will make a recommendation to the design committee on every every suggestion that we get. Now, we could decide that we don't want to make any recommendations. We're not going to make any recommendations. We're just going to pass through the, the information. So it's just to try to get clear about the recommend, recommend whatever that part means. In terms of communicating, I totally agree with you. I want people to talk to each other. People talk to the committee, people talk to, and we want to facilitate those conversations. So I, I think we're, we're in agreement. Aniki, you had a hand up, but then it dropped. Did you want to? I did. I was just kind of uh, processing my thought a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I also think that in addition uh, to the benefits of us being clear onto where these parameters are, where is the wiggle room? Um, that will give us an opportunity as outreach, unless I'm misunderstanding on this, we would be able to have forums and create uh, time frames for people um, you, to relay the information because in, in addition to target audience, which target audiences, which also would include just various people who are unaware of the product, you know, and who do not know about, you know, what's going on at all. Um, I would imagine we'd have various, like whether we did a forum, um, you know, I would imagine probably Zooms, hopefully the weather is warming up, maybe there are other creative ways that, you know, we could get to some folks, you know, I mean, even if we look at just the layout of the library, we're talking about from seniors to those that would fill the children's room. So um, I think there could be lots of opportunities as it warms up for some great community engagement, whether we're at, you know, outside of senior center or, you know, partnering, you know, the stakeholders, the, you know, whether school committees or um, whomsoever within the school system. But again, I think it all at this point goes back to us being really clear as to, you know, what, what we're saying. Like, we want to make sure that when we say something, we're able to follow through with it, you know, even if clarity is we don't know at this point and we will get back to you. Thanks. So I, one of the things that I struggle with, um, so I joined the Board of Trustees literally as the MBLC application was being submitted. So I wasn't part of the community outreach and I will readily admit that I was working and not even remotely paying attention, was not part of those conversations, didn't give my two cents. And, you know, that's we're all busy. Um, I, I very much believe in this project, as I'm sure I've made clear in the, in the time that I've been um, on the project. Um, and what's difficult is from the MBLC, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, we've committed to a certain program. Um, 
And what I struggle with is that's a program that we created 10 years ago and times have changed and you know, we can't throw the program out the window. Um, and we have pricing based on a schematic design based on that program. And so, you know, we're about to spend $36 million on a library, <laughs> right? And, and, and what a library looks like in 2022 and what it'll look like in 2026, quite frankly, is probably different than what we as a community thought we needed, you know, 10 years ago when we did this. And so, you know, in theory, everything could be under discussion, but everything has a cost to it. Um, and we're already a couple of years behind schedule. And so I'm trying to balance making sure that for the amount of money that we're spending on this library, that it is exactly what we need today and into the future and not necessarily what we thought we needed 10 years ago. And so I'm trying to figure out how to sort of thread that needle of partnering with the community, hearing their values, hearing what it means to them um, and knowing that we can push back on certain things, but we can't just decide you know, we need a new room that wasn't in the original plan because that would have to be signed off by the MBLC. That would have to, you know, it, it either lose space somewhere or get additional funding. So there's, everything is a give and take. And so um, I'm not super clear yet as a committee on, on what we're prepared to go out and do and say to the community. So, and I guess that's kind of what I'm wrestling with is that we sort of have to decide. And I love everything that, you know, Alex and Anika said, um, and, and, and I'm fully agree with and, and want to do those things. So I guess I'm just trying to, again, figure out sort of what would our next step be? What does the group think our next step would be? And is it to figure out what we are asking from the community, right? Is it, you know, what Alex said about, um, you know, how, what, what does sustainability and, and inclusion mean and equity mean to our community? How does that look in our community? Like, is that our focus? Or um, I, I don't know whether we need to just sort of define something. I'm not sure how to get from this loosey goosey area to like actionable ways to move forward in a plan. So again, Alex, are you raising your hand? <laughs> yeah, no. sorry, I, I'm not good at sustaining excitement. Um, the, uh, I guess like one thing I, it would be really helpful if we had a very clear um, idea of what could be changed, of like exactly what people have talked about, what can be changed, what is static. Um, if OVM can put that together, I think there's a lot of, uh, ideas that are running through my head. I don't want to call them exciting, um, but it might be interesting to start calling in uh, or to like put that together in a way that is presentable to the public um, in a printable format. And uh, specifically, I'm thinking about, you know, just having basically a blank blueprint schematic, asking people to draw the library, um, you know, the draw the library under the uh under these values right like what does an equitable library look like to you here are the things that we know we're going to be part of it because they're currently part of the process we've committed to um but here are all the other things that you can add in and you know let your imagination run wild it might make a fun thing to print in the newspaper but it also might make a fun thing to distribute to every first grade class in the town and let uh and really try and figure out how do we get this in the hands of multiple generations um, as a way to get people to start talking. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, um, so uh, does anybody else have any thoughts, questions? comments to share at this point? Okay. Um, so the next Ooh. item, Sorry. Yeah, please Alex. The other thing that um, I just, before it the connections get cold is like, it seems like people did a lot of really hard organizing um, in the lead up to the vote on the library and reaching out to those 
organizations and their leaders um, in whatever state they might still be in to try and figure out how they would like to participate in this process, um, I think is an important next step, uh, even if it's more on the informal side, um, so that we are capturing those voices going forward and not losing all of the energy that people have already dedicated to this project and despite the outcomes. That's actually a, a good segue and reminder for me, Alex. Thank you. So um, as I said, there, there are some people um, in the audience. I recognize, I recognize names of people who um, have expressed interest in being part of the work of this group. And before this group was formed, I don't think it was clear what it was going to look like. Would there be members from the public? It wound up just being members of the bigger Jones Library Building Committee. So I don't know. Um, I mean, it would be up to us, I guess, to sort of determine, uh, you know, how and when we invite certain people into the room as consultants, or, or, you know, how if if we have community members who want to really jump in and be engaged in this process, um, what would that look like? How do we decide? How do we invite them in? Is just something to maybe think about um, for the group. Put out there. <laughs> Go ahead, Anika. I think that you know we can go ahead and collect names, if you will, uh, for who would want to be involved and participate. But you know, it's again our responsibility to make sure that we're clear and how they can, um, you know, what what's available. And then you know, let's also remember there will just be information that we're passing on from the building committee meetings to the community. You know, so we, I mean, we do have. I mean, we're still getting going. There's still a lot that has to uh, be determined before we'll have much more to say, but you know, there is still, I mean, they're having the plan. So there may be people who, um, you know, at this point haven't been able to attend the meetings. Um, if there are recordings, there are plans to look at just for people to start um, getting a sense of what's going on and start forming opinions. And then, you know, I would, I would hope and have fingers crossed that by our next meeting we'll be clear or clearer with our boundaries of what we we can offer. Okay, so what I'm hearing and oh, go ahead, Austin. I just want to before we lose it to pick up on something that Alex uh, Ope has said, Xander. Um. We did a massive public outreach campaign. It was called an election. And there were, again, as we, as we think about what's changeable and what's not changeable, there were things that we represented to the voters of Amherst uh, about what we were gonna do in the library. I think we have a kind of obligation to make sure that we honor those commitments. Those commitments don't get down to you know the arrangement of rooms, but they do get down to things like what the building is going to look like, what the programs are going to be in the building, uh, what our values are, uh, and you know among the people it turned out, uh, sixty-five percent of the public endorsed what we've asked them to. Uh, it turns out, I believe, that in every is it district or precinct in town? Uh, a major every one of them, a majority of the voters endorsed the proposal. Now, again, that doesn't tell us anything, but I think what Alex said is exactly right. We want to kind of reach out to the groups that were involved in that campaign and how did they reach out to people? Uh, but I think that, that some of what is changeable and not is a is a design thing. The OPM can help us. And some of it is we need to think about what is it that we actually represented uh, to the public that we were going to do with the, the library. And I don't think that the OPM can't really tell us that, right? That we just have to kind of uh, remember as a set of operating assumptions. OK, thanks. So. What I'm hearing in terms of next steps is for Ken, for the OPM to sort of 
create some sort of list of what can and can't be changed so that we are all starting off with a clear understanding. Um, looking at reaching out to leaders who have helped in the past to see how we can enlist them as we come up with a plan for how we're gonna move forward. Collecting the names of those who wanna be more involved so that once we know what that means, we have sort of a ready list. And then maybe for each of us as a, a takeaway item, you know, thinking about uh, focusing on who is um, identifying our target audience um, and maybe starting to think about, um, you know, ways uh, to, you know, ways to empower them, ways to engage, ways to, you know, work on. I mean, the, the library has a, a lot of existing partnerships in the community, um, whether it's the survival center, whether it's, you know, Craig's doors, whether it's, I mean, so we already have a lot of partnerships in place with a lot of community members who may be part of our target audience. And so perhaps identifying who those partners are now and how we can also leverage those. So those are just sort of things I'm thinking about. I don't know if anybody else wants to add to sort of a next steps, takeaways, things to think about or bring back to the next meeting. Okay. Um, so the next um, topic, that, oh, please Alex. Oh, sorry. Uh, that, that sounds great. Um, and I just want to emphasize, uh, I like your term heated agreement, Austin. Um, the, I just want to emphasize that yes, the capturing that momentum, um, but not just the 65%, also the 35% who disagreed in the amount of energy they put into the campaign, um, and getting them to be part of this process and the people who didn't show up. And so I think, uh, being able to both open the Rolodex of who the current community connections are for the library, um, as well as who isn't, right? And how do we, what is different in those two lists? Thanks, Alex. Um, so the next item we had was a regular meeting schedule. And um, Alex, I don't know if, if this time was, picked prior or whether you were part of this time. Um, so I guess I just wanna see if, um, I guess one is how frequently should we be meeting and is there a best date time for the group in terms of meeting? So I guess, Ken, did you have any suggestions in terms of regularity of meeting that you think we should consider? I think at this point, I think, you know, uh, there's a lot to consider. I've got a as you said, put some stuff together, I think, you know, uh, about three to four weeks from now. And then I think once we have a designer engaged, we could probably step up those, but I wouldn't personally want to go beyond four weeks. I think that would be a little too long um, going beyond that. Anybody else thoughts or comments on how long before our next meeting, how much time we want to Think about things. Anika? Oh, I'm sorry, Ken, I, I did not hear everything you said. Did you say um, that you would recommend a month to be able to gather information or were you just saying that you wouldn't recommend that we would wait longer than one month to wait to meet again? Yeah, I was saying uh, three to four weeks. And that way there I have some time to really gather and uh, understand. And then I wouldn't go beyond four weeks. Going over a month, I think, is just going to, you know, uh, not be a good good feeling for any of us involved in it. So that's why I'm saying, you know, I think three weeks is about right. But uh, knowing that calendars might not align, I'm thinking, you know, four weeks would be the maximum. So is, is there an interest by this committee? I mean, do we, you know, I want to be mindful of everybody's time, this being volunteer work and many of you being on multiple committees and having multiple obligations. Um, is it a better use of time to sort of parse out, um, you know, waiting for the OPM and meeting in three to four weeks, having a, a meeting uh, sooner than that to talk about sort of the other items? What, what, what would people favor in terms of just one meeting three or four weeks from now or two meetings, one sooner and one later, is there a preference? I would imagine we would need two. Okay. Alex, do you have a preference? 
Okay. Um, so in terms of, uh, Alex, is this a good time of day for you? <laughs> okay, great. And Anika, this works for you? Ish. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sorry? I will make it work. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, so do we want to have our next meeting uh, in what, in, do we want to do two weeks to have the first conversation about identifying, you know, community partners and, you know, all the things other than the OPM defining <laughs> what we can actually talk to the community and get feedback about? So that would be that the would be helpful and then we'll be ready to go. You know, we'll we'll have we'll have a lot of uh, an information it will be packed with information when we do need it. So. Okay. So does the 22nd at four o'clock work for people? Sounds great. And can we also invite whoever um is doing that work of holding all those community connections together uh for the library? <sighs> Um, that would be a lot of people. Um, it's awesome. I don't, I'll ask. Yeah, it's not. It's not quite that. Uh, there's not one person who necessarily, but I will ask the question. Um, Sharon would have a better answer for that. Um, okay. Okay. Um, there are no topics that were not anticipated by me because I didn't know I was chair until 42 minutes ago. Um, we do have a. Lot of Alex, you're muted, Alex. Sorry. Um, I said that there are uh, no topics anticipated, not anticipated by me because I didn't know I was going to be chair until 42 minutes ago, but we do have eight people um, in uh, the audience, and I would love um, for anyone in the audience who has public comment um, to chime in, and you could raise your hand, uh, and I would happily call on you. If anyone in the audience wants to speak. Okay, it's a good start for community outreach. <laughs> Killing it here as chair. <laughs> oh good, yay, I have hands. Thank you. Um, Lauren, I don't, uh, Michelle, can you promote uh, or do whatever for Lauren, uh, who I assume is Lauren Mills? Yes, hi. Good afternoon, hey, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Yes, I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I am just listening right now. Um, I'll just stay as an attendee, if that's okay. Um, but I I was um, uh, invited by Alex uh, Leverby, uh, and um, libraries are I guess close to my heart because I have young children, so I use them often. And um, also my mom, I, I grew up in Boston and my mom worked at a library, Boston Public Library. So um, I know that the Jones Library is not gonna be the only, you know, choice that people have, you know, to, you know, go to a library. There's the, um, the, the library that's closer to me and I, the Memorial Library that I can't think of the name right now, Munson. And um, so I just, I just think that, you know, with all the other commitments that, you know, have been stated that people have in their lives and, you know, time being, you know, important, you know, we want hopefully to make, you know, community outreach, you know, fun. And as you said, engaging and inclusive. And just, you know, as, you know, a person of, you know, color, a person who identifies as African-American, you know, we want to not only um, have, you know, input, you know, even if it's just, you know, a listening session, or as you said, you know, passing on information to the larger building, committee, but uh, just to keep in mind that, you know, people of color uh, 
they or just you know for myself you know when we are involved in um community um engagement we want to not only you know have a chance to to speak but it just would be great to to have that creative spark you know like another um sub subcommittee member said that you know have the imagination you know be engaged and it's not only about a decision making process but just bringing um you know fun because library libraries are you know places for communities to you know communicate and um you know there's all different aspects of the community so just again as a person of of color um right from the start you know i hope that you would consider um those folks in the community as stakeholders and people who would appreciate being engaged in in your community outreach so thank you thank you lauren and thanks for taking the time to come and listen and participate appreciate it sure um i know max had a hand but he dropped the hand so i don't know whether he wanted to speak or not not putting his hand back up so i'll assume no oh uh david lithgow Dave, you're in the room. I think you just need to unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Yes, you're great. Go ahead. Uh, I guess I just quickly, I'm curious to know if you all have as an agenda item the ultimate answer to uh, uh, Austin's uh, question regarding uh, the quote recommendations uh, unquote role of, uh, of this subcommittee. Uh, it seems to me inevitable, <laughs> this being Amherst, that there will be a, a lot of competing uh, uh, competing interests uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the various design uh, recommendations, that, you know, for the library, and uh, and and I am curious to know whether the committee, uh, whether this subcommittee will be setting will have a role in sort of setting priorities or in in a sense uh, advocating for certain interests or interest groups as opposed to others. Uh, the reason I'm calling is is because I'm specifically interested in the IDD community, the individuals with the uh, dis de developmental disabilities uh, who as a as a cohort within this community have no common ground to share uh, and it it seems to me that it's a group that has been neglected and it seems to me it really should be part of the uh, library's uh, you know mission to uh, when we talk about inclusion to uh, <clears throat> be thinking of uh, of that of that community within uh, within this town uh, and so the question arises in my mind is is this committee uh, and, and, and what is the role of this committee when it comes to advocacy? And I'm getting too wordy, so I'll shut up. Thank you, David. Appreciate your comment. Anyone else uh, in the audience would like to share a comment or thought? Okay, thank you both David and Lauren, appreciate you and appreciate everybody actually who's in attendance. Thank you for attending. Um, so I think that's the last item we had on this agenda. Um, does anybody else have any parting thoughts or comments before we call the meeting to adjournment? Great. Well, thank you for bearing with me as we uh, create a new committee for the first time on something I've never done before and then muddling through. So I appreciate everybody's uh, participation efforts, comments, uh, keep it coming. I really want this to be a collaborative um, committee that hopefully finds new and different ways to really engage the public. And as Anika and Alex have both rightly pointed out, the target audiences that are often uh, not 
um, at the table. So thank you everyone for your work. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting. Thanks everyone.